many enterprises deal with vehicle routing challenges. So for example, in this last mile delivery problem, we need to deliver all of the packets to a number of locations in this region. And as you can see, as we add locations, the optimal routes actually change. Um, the goal here is to minimize the delivery time to deliver all package with our vehicles available. The best way to get started with OptiPlanner is to clone the OptiPlanner Quick Starts repository. Uh, in this Quick Start re repository, you will find currently four use cases and all of them are available in Quarkus with Java. One of them, the school time tabling uh, example, is also available in Spring Boot with Java and in Quarkus with Kotlin. Right? Now, if you want to run these examples, simply run the run uh, Quick Start script, which I'll, I'm going to do right here right now. And um, I've modified this to actually skip the build. But um, you can now see if we go to localhost and we click uh, refresh, we can actually see this coming up. This allows us to choose which example we want to run uh, right now. So let's run the school time tabling example. Um, this will actually run Quarkus Dev on, uh, on the background. And um, once that's ready, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Besides the school time tabling example, where we're assigning lessons to rooms into time slots, we also have a fac facility location problem where we need to choose uh, the best locations for new stores, distribution centers, COVID vaccination centers, and so forth, telco masts. And then we have a, we're working on a maintenance scheduling example, for example, for maintenance of uh, airplanes or uh, maintenance scheduling of airplanes or um, uh, elevators and, and uh, so forth. Uh, we have a fun example around factorial uh, layout, which is a, 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 an interesting video game. And we have a couple of cases around uh, vehicle routing and employee rostering, which you might have already seen in the past. So let me sh show, let me take a look at the school time tabling one. So in this, we're going to assign the, these lessons to these time slots in these rooms. Now, when we click the solve button, what you'll see is that um, everything will be assigned to the first room and to the first time slot. And the reason for that is because I've disabled all of the constraints. Currently, there is no AI actually happening, or at least there's no effect to it. But um, if we actually switch back to the source code and we say, okay, we don't want to have multiple um, lessons in the same room at the same time, we can actually just add this constraint. This is how it looks. I'm not going to go into the implementation right now. But if we now go back over here, we refresh this thanks to Quark as this uh, takes just an instance, we solve this problem, you will see that OptoPlanner now doesn't assign two, room, two lessons in the same room at the same time. So we've actually solved that problem. However, if you look from a teacher's point of view, you will still see, well, it looks good for the teachers apparently, but if you look for the student groups, you will still see that we have two uh, student groups, the ninth grade here, um, in the same room at the same time. So uh, let's fix that too. And actually there could be still teacher conflicts. So I'm going to meanwhile fix this one too. So I'm going to enable these constraints. And if we go back over here, we do another refresh, we do another solve. We can see the results of these AI constraints actually in this schedule. Now we get a different schedule as we did before, but still all of the rooms, and there is no room conflicts. If we now go to the student groups, you can see there's no student group, group conflicts. And if you go to the teachers, you can see there's no conflicts there either. However, it's not really a compact uh, schedule for the teachers yet. You can see many gaps for, particular, for each teacher. You can see gaps in their schedule. And that too, of course, we can fix with what we call soft constraints. And so here I have an, a number of soft constraints. Let me take the teacher time efficiency constraint, add that in, and let's take a look what that does for us. So we refresh the page again, we solve again, we take a look at the teacher effect, and you can see we get much more compact um, uh, schedules for the teachers. For more information, visit optoplanner.org.